therefore, could God not exist in a dimension that you haven't yet discovered? Therefore, sir, I would suggest you're not an atheist, you're an agnostic and one step closer to knowing my Jesus. Could Bigfoot not exist in a dimension you haven't discovered yet? Well, then you're agnostic about Bigfoot and one step closer to my friend Bigfoot. <laughs> Hello, lovely people. My name is Emma. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to what should be a relatively short video because today we're taking a look at a revived life video called How to Defeat an Atheist in Under Two Minutes. This was recommended to me and it just tickled my fancy. Mostly I thought it was an interesting title, Defeat. I'm guessing it means on the topic of being an atheist because you could defeat an atheist in a whole variety of ways, like you could defeat anyone. We are as vulnerable to stabbings as anybody else. I'm just kind of interested to see what he has to say because I find it so very unlikely that this one person has discovered a way to undo atheism. Because what is defeating atheism if not converting somebody to theism? In less than two minutes, I feel like I have heard every argument under the sun. From the ethical and philosophical through to historical arguments, I feel like I've heard everything and I've never been. My atheism has not yet been defeated. So if this guy can do it in two minutes, I'll be super impressed. And this channel will take a weird turn because I'll be religious. A little while ago, I was invited to a university to speak at the Atheistic Society. They said, Pastor Barrett, we would like you to come and get involved in a debate with all the atheists. I said, F All of them. He's going to take on all the atheists in the Atheist Society at this university. <laughs> Fine. I said, what's the heading? Well, what's, what's the caption? What are we debating on? And they said this, the debate is this, the premise is, there is no God. That is an incredibly broad topic for a debate. <laughs> wow. There is no God, you have five minutes. Jesus. I said, okay. They said, yeah, the, the president of the Atheistic Club, he will stand up and he will share for 15 minutes on how there is no God. And then we're going to give you 10 minutes to prove to us that there is a God. I said, bro, I don't need 10. I only need two minutes. That wasn't very nice of the Atheistic Society to give themselves 15 minutes and this chat 10 minutes. Did they only have 25 minutes to spare for him to talk? That's kind of a bummer. Luckily, he only needs two minutes. It just a, seems a strange thing for an atheist society. An atheist society is a weird concept to me, but I can understand why it would be a thing in countries that are more religious. It would be quite a weird thing to happen here, I think. An atheistic society debating there is no... Because what's, what's the purpose of... What do you get out of this particular debate? This is such a... It's so broad, it's so strange, it's like... The equivalent cryptid debate would be like, there is no Bigfoot. And then what, you talk for 15 minutes about how there's no Bigfoot? It just, it just doesn't make any sense to me. It sounds really weird, which makes me think it might not be completely true. You know what? A speaker can embellish a story if they like for dramatic effect. If it has a, a good arc and a good ending, I'll forgive it. He said, come on down. So I went down, I won't tell you which university it was, but I, I drove to, to Cambridge, and when I got to Cambridge, I, I go into this lecture hall, right? I'm guessing that's Cambridge, Australia. <laughs> Which I think is a university in a town called Cambridge in Australia. Because if you're talking about Cambridge, England, the joke wouldn't work as well because there are two universities in Cambridge, UK. We'll assume he's talking about Cambridge, Australia, right? I don't know how... I don't know anything about that university. Let's just carry on. And there's, I don't know, a thousand, eight hundred, a thousand students there. And, and, and the lead atheist, he gets up and he's... What did... Hold on. In the atheistic society debate, there are how many students? Atheist, he gets up and he's... Thousand students there. I don't know, a thousand, eight hundred, a thousand students there. Oh, eight hundred, a thousand. That seems like a lot. But for a second, I thought he was saying there were 800,000 students. 800 students at a debate? It's either a fucking huge university or students in Australia are way more dedicated than in the UK. <laughs> 800 to 1,000 students at a... Not even like a mainstream thing, like a society debate? That's crazy. No? 
and, and, and the lead atheist, he gets up and he's preaching. The lead atheist. <laughs> the lead atheist. That's so funny. The leader of the society, the, the head of the society, I assume is what he means. The lead atheist got up. I had to tackle the leader of the gang. And he's spitting and he's frothing at the mouth and he's eloquent, he's brilliant. How can any rational person believe that there is a God? You've got to be stupid to believe that there is a God. And all these sorts of things, all the things that you... I don't agree with that. I think that's really rude. Again, no way of knowing this is accurate, that this either happened or that this is how it went if it did happen. But the whole, you've got to be stupid to believe in God. I don't like that. That's rude. That's unnecessary. And... uh I think it's weird to like say that the leader said that, but also they were incredibly eloquent and intelligent. Like that seemed to me, those are not like that's not the argument of that's not a well made argument by a debate society leader. Unless they've never done a debate before and this is just the atheist society were like, Oh, it'd be really funny to make this preacher come down here and do a debate with us. You've heard. And then they said, and now we're gonna get Glenn Barrett, he's gonna come up and tell us why there is a God. You ever read the verse, led like a lamb to the slaughter? <laughs> so I get up on stage and there's boos and hisses and all these sorts. They're on stage and everything. Like it's like, like it's like a packed auditorium of the leader of the atheistic society versus a preacher they've asked to come down and debate with. To a, a, a stage in front of a thousand students. What, what universe is this happening in? I'm so confused sorts of things and, and I come up the front and I just said to the guy, I said, listen, uh, you spoke so eloquently. I said, come and join me on stage. So he came and joined me at the podium at the front there and, and I said, you believe there is no God? He said, there is no God. You cannot be a rational person and believe there is a God. I said, okay, help me out with this. I want to show you something. And I drew a circle on a whiteboard like this. Oh, it's a good job he had a whiteboard there. That wasn't a whiteboard a minute ago. Now there's a podium and a whiteboard where... Uh... We're starting to be able to visualize the scene. I said, this circle represents knowledge. Everything that could ever be known about any subject fits in there. All the sciences, all the arts. You're an intelligent man. You studied this university. How much do you know of everything that could possibly be known? So he took a pen and he drew that and he went, I reckon I know this much. That seems like a vast overstatement, in my opinion. <laughs> everything that could ever be known? This dude fucking just barely touched the pen on the whiteboard. I said, wow, you're intelligent. He said, yeah, I am. I said, that's brilliant. I said, so that's what you do know? He said, yes. I said, and that's what you don't know? He said, yes. But this does exist. You just haven't discovered it yet. Yes. Therefore, could God not exist in a dimension that you haven't yet discovered? I feel like... He was, I have paused at an unfortunate frame. <laughs> I feel like he was almost, this is a stupid point anyway, but I feel like he was almost on a good point until he specified dimension, like God could, and, and it's just like the whole um, AJ Miller documentary thing, where it's like people with no knowledge of that area of science, assuming that dimensions are like, Little places, little other worlds that creatures can inhabit. That's not that's not what a dimension is. It instantly, like, completely ruins his flow, and makes him sound like an idiot. Gutted. Answer? Yes. Therefore, sir, I would suggest you're not an atheist, you're an agnostic, and one step closer to knowing my Jesus. Well, so okay. Well, there we go. Again, I'd say defeated is a pretty strong word for what just happened. This can all be summed up by basically my earlier point, which is that this is... The, the outcome of this debate is exactly the same as it would be if it was about Bigfoot. Could Bigfoot not exist in a dimension you haven't discovered yet? Well, then you're agnostic about Bigfoot. And one step closer to my friend Bigfoot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, replace Jesus and God with Bigfoot, and it's exactly the same. There is no difference here. There's no. Po it's exactly the same as the invisible unicorn, the invisible dragon. Um, I think is it Carl Sagan that has the invisible dragon one? You know what I'm saying, right? This is a fruitless argument. Nobody on either side gains anything from this debate. That this whole debate 
the idea of debating there is no God is completely absurd anyway. The point, rather, in my opinion, is that according to religious doctrine, we do not see the evidence that we are expected to see for a God. And then it's much more sensible to get into discussions of specific gods, right? A specific idea of God. So it would be more sensible to get this preacher down to discuss... Uh, if you're going to have that broader conversation, you get this preacher in to discuss the implausibility of his Christian biblical God, the contradictory nature of that God, the moral questionability of that God, etc, etc. This, this could be Bigfoot. This could be a debate about Bigfoot, and it would be exactly the same. What's the point? And he wrapped it up with a classic misunderstanding of atheism versus agnosticism. People do use the term atheist in different ways, but generally the accepted meaning is having a lack of faith or belief in a god or gods. It is atheism. It is the absence of belief in a deity. In that sense, preacher, whatever his name is, pastor, Pastor Paul Burns, is that his name, or have I just made that up? Pastor Burns, maybe, uh, is atheistic about Vishnu. You know what I'm saying? Agnosticism is the idea that we cannot know if there is a deity. That knowing whether there is a god or gods is unknowable. To use this debate as an example, agnosticism is seeing this debate and saying, clearly it is impossible to use human reason to prove that God does or doesn't exist. We simply cannot say for certain using reason or factual logic. It is unknowable. At least at present, it is unknowable. That's why you can be atheistic and agnostic, like I am, like a lot of people are. The arrogance of smarming and smiling and laughing on stage and going, there you go, you're not, a, you're not an atheist, you're agnostic and one step closer to my Jesus. No, they're still an atheist because they don't have a belief in a god. They lack that belief, therefore they are an atheist. I think there are a lot more atheists than people realise simply because maybe it is because there are places across the world where it is so controversial to be an atheist because it has this association of being like, there is no God, there cannot be a God, I hate God, whatever the whatever the evangelicals claim atheism to be. I suspect that's why a lot more people self-ID as agnostic when they are actually also atheists. They also lack a belief because most people, most modern rational people who do not have a faith system, who are not part of a religion, would probably say, I don't have any belief in a God, but I don't know whether one could exist. That's atheism and agnosticism. Well, another day, another disappointment, I have yet to be defeated. Channel stays the same, more content to come. <laughs> if you've got any reverse solutions for how to defeat a preacher in under two minutes, uh, drop them down below. Do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Think about becoming a channel member, maybe check out the Patreon. And with that, I must give a big old shout out and a thank you to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. <laughs>